No success in the world can compensate for failure in the home. That's why Club Wealth was founded, to help driven, successful, and busy real estate agents like you double their business while building a strong, balanced home life. Join us each week as high-producing agents and team leaders share their stories and unpack the principles and systems they've used to double, triple, and even quadruple their business while enjoying greater quality of life. And now, here's the latest episode of Club Wealth TV. Welcome back, everybody. This is another special crossover episode between Club Wealth and Real Estate Uncensored. I am Matt Johnson. I've got my partner in crime, Greg McDaniel, in the co-pilot seat. But more importantly, we have Michael Hellickson here. Michael, what's going on today? Dude, what's happened? I cannot wait for this conversation. This is a conversation that needs to happen and that absolutely will revolutionize this business for the people that listen to it and take it to heart. So I'm really excited about it. We're going to soak it up. So first of all, what is the uh, what are the tough conversations? So the agents that are going to be successful, we, we talked about in the last one, you know, things are shifting. This is a, a little interesting little blip of time that will pass. Winter is coming. It's going to get a little bit tougher and for certain people. But for the agents that are going to thrive, let's talk about what are the conversations they are having with home owners are they going to have over the next six months is going to make them more successful. We have nerfed our society, literally, right? Like literally, we, what we have essentially done with society is created a society of people afraid to have a real conversation about anything. There's only two ways in America to have a conversation today. That's either in your face, piss everybody off or not at all, right? Like those that's are the true. only two ways people have figured out how to communicate. Well, guess what? We got to find that middle ground and we got to get to a point where we can pragmatically discuss what needs to be discussed so we can help people get what they really want. The problem is with all our participation medal trophy winning kids out there nowadays, they're not <laughs> capable of getting in somebody's face in a nice way and saying, hey, look, you know, you're behind on your mortgage. Let's talk about your options. Let's talk about what needs to happen from here so that it doesn't go to foreclosure. Let's talk about what the potential ramifications are if you continue to not make your payment. They're afraid to even have the conversation with somebody about their commission. They're like, oh, 1%, I'll take it. Like, I mean, come on. Like, <laughs> if, you, if you can't even negotiate your own freaking commission, what makes you think you're going to be able to save somebody from foreclosure? Oh, but I just, I want to send them a text message. Dude, that's the society we're in today. You know, okay, this is terrible, totally off topic, but it's kind of, actually, it's not entirely off topic, but here's an example. Kids today, how do they, how do a young, how does a young man ask a girl out today? With a text message. Are you freaking <laughs> kidding me? Oh, and then what do they do for a day? They go, they, they, they go to somebody's house, they sit there and they all sit around on their, on the couch, on their phones and they're all Facebook messaging or text messaging or Instagramming or whatever the heck they do, but they're not having real conversation. And because we've lost the ability to have conversation in our society, those that have it will stand out. They'll make more money. They'll have greater success, both personally and professionally and in every other area of their life because they're not afraid to communicate and they know how. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Oh, I love it. Yeah, kids these days, we can go way down that rabbit hole. We'll, we'll try to keep it. Uh, we'll try to keep it out of the grumpy old man territory. But it's it's so true. Um, but like, <laughs> you hear that, Greg? He just called me a grumpy old man. Do you see that? You gonna defend oh, I, me here? Come on. I heard that. I'm 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 taking notes here so I can just browbeat Matt later. Don't worry. I mean, I hey, got I've, back, I've been I've been 70 years old since I was seven. So I think I've got both of you I, beat in you internally. Really I think the uh, I, t I told Greg one time the guy from Up is my spirit animal. Yes, I love. <laughs> that guy that's <laughs> awesome but here's, right, the, so here's the good news let me give yeah. you the good news behind all this because there are young people like my son i'll take my son for example all right so his name's yeah. austin uh you guys know austin he's a freaking rock star right yeah. so here's a kid that's not afraid so when he was a, and, and i'll use the dating thing as a perfect uh, analogy but you know when he was seven years old he would we were in a we were in a actually i think he was six at the time six or seven no uh, it must have been seven we're in line to, to for a movie and there's all these cute high school cheerleader girls standing in line in front of us. And I'm not joking you, without skipping a bait, young Austin, he walks up to one of those girls, sure enough. I mean, he's seven years old. He's half their age. <laughs> walks up to one of them, he takes his phone out, and he says, excuse me, we're doing a survey. Would you mind filling it out? And he's got a contact record, an empty contact record up on his phone. So it's like they're going to fill it. <laughs> this girl just loses it, right? And then he goes, he goes to the next one. And, and and I can't remember. He was just it was just cheesy pickup line after cheesy pickup line that he just kept hitting these girls with, right? And I'm thinking to myself, this is a communicator, right? Yeah. This is somebody that knows how to communicate and will do what it takes to succeed in this in this world. 
that and there are kids like that out there today and not just kids there are people at all age levels that are like that today and i'm not saying you got to be the cheesy pickup line person to be successful in real estate but what i am saying is you got to learn to communicate with people you got to learn to open your mouth and be unafraid to do so. Uh, and if you can do that, and if you can not only open your mouth, but have the hard conversations with people about how much do they own their mortgage? How far behind are they? Is there an auction date scheduled? Let me tell you, I went from, you know, roughly a hundred or so listings to 750 listings in about 10 months because I was unafraid to ask those questions and people appreciated it. Now, how I would ask those questions, now this is another piece that I think is very important. How I would ask those questions made a big difference. I didn't look them in the eye, right? Like, think about this. You're accountant, right? When's the last, like, you, like if I asked you guys, could you tell me what color eyes your CPA has? Probably not, right? <laughs> no. Okay. Right? I mean, you're not gazing deeply into their eyes, right? When you talk to your CPA, they got their pad and paper and they're just, you know, okay. And, you know, your Coke bottle glasses and they're like, okay, so uh, what do you owe here? And what do you owe there? And what are you in them? And they don't even look you in the eye. They're just very pragmatic to ask the questions that need to be asked. And part of that is very psychological as well. Part of the reason in that scenario why I, why I will not look the person in the eye is because I don't want to make them uncomfortable. If you look them in the eye when you're asking the difficult questions, you put them on the defensive. Mm -hmm. I don't want them on the defensive. I just want to know, yep, this is part of the process. Okay, so who's your first mortgage? All right, great. And how much do you owe? Fantastic. How far behind are the payments? Six months? Great. All right, who's your second mortgage? Then I just move on. Like, it's no big deal. And that puts them at ease. And now all of a sudden, I can do what I need to do, which is get their freaking household, keep them from foreclosure, mm -hmm. and make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned a script a long time ago, Michael, it's yours is obviously more in depth, but it was for me to get contact information from someone at an open house or when you're door knocking or something like that. The whole idea was just like you have your sheet of paper and you just you're like, so uh, what's your uh, what's your best email and phone number? And then you just stare right directly at your pad like you got it from the last 30 people you've talked to about prospecting and why wouldn't this person give it to you as well? I had people take that and put it into action. They're like, holy smokes, Greg, like, that freaking worked. And I'm like, yeah, because your expectations were different. You weren't begging. You were just commanding your space that you live in, you know, in the air around you. And you say, so, what, you know, Michael, what's your, uh, what's your best email contact, um, email and uh, email and phone number? And then just stare at it until, until they say anything. And, you, and say that's right. You got to shut your mouth at that point. Shut up. Yep. That's, so there's two words that, that people have to remember this. And Greg, you, you probably already know this. It's a neuro-linguistic programming technique yep. that you're actually implementing there called the assumptive close. Yep. And it works. Everything we do is assumptive close. Why wouldn't you do business with me? Why wouldn't you give me your name and email address and phone yeah. number or whatever? Like, it's just, it's what we do. Like, if you don't do it, you're weird, right? And right. nobody wants to be weird. They want to be accepted. So everybody yeah, else yeah. is doing this. You know, it's peer pressure, right? Even though the peers aren't there, you can implement the power of peer pressure. That's what your son did at the movies. Yeah, right? <laughs> dude, dude, I wish you could have been there. Man. Doing the survey. All right, I'm hitting, I'm hitting, as soon as the mall is open, I'm hitting the mall with that strategy. Oh. All right, let's, uh, let's talk just briefly, uh, what, are the, what are the types of conversations that you think people are going to have? Because right now, the, the conversations that people are having with homeowners is, you know, like they, they know they're going to get, out, you know, multiple, multiple, multiple offers. They know that it's going to be for over asking. So like agents are not getting a lot of tough questions. I don't feel like right now. It's more of like, if we vibe, Right? No, no, there are tough questions. And Which, what you, tough what questions are they getting? The tough conversation needs to okay. happen today. In a seller's market, the tough conversation needs to happen with the buyer. Oh, that's it's, true. Greg, bro, are you nuts? You, do you realize, and I'll literally say it just like that. Greg, do you realize that these guys are going to probably have 25, 30 offers on this property and it's not going to go for 20% below? And if you don't make a full <laughs> price or a better offer, they might not even respond. They may not even call us back. And I yep. need to tell them that before I submit the offer. Why? Because if I wait until after I submit the offer, then to have the conversation with them, then guess what? I look like a schmuck. Yep. But if I tell them what to expect before it happens and I'm right, right now be right, start with that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, make sure you know your product, but understand that if I'm right about it at that time, they'll, they'll say, wow, you were right. There were multiple offers and it did go for over asking. And I say, now listen, Greg, let me tell you. <laughs> What's more important to you? Do you want to make sure that you get this house or do you want to get a good deal on a house? 
God, that's so good. I use that exact, almost that exact script on one people, you know, mm-hmm. and the answer is it's so clear is because, well, I want to get that house. I, my variation is very, sh- 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 it changes a little bit. I just say, look, Michael, do you want to try to buy a house or do you just want to buy the damn thing? You know, and people always say, I just want to buy the damn thing. I'm like, okay, this is what we <laughs> got to do then. And it's true though. A lot of people think that we're nuts when we say there's that many offers, but I wrote offers for a client in San Francisco. There was 46 on one of them which the house was a beater. I don't know wow. why there's 46 offers. Um, nice. You know, 25, 18, uh, 12, and then we finally got ours. But I mean, it was just like, it's like, holy mackerel. Like, mm-hmm. and nobody, she she didn't listen. And I'm like, okay, well. And she's like, oh, let's write for 100 grand less. I'm like, nah, <laughs> it's not going to work. And I'll tell them, I'll write it up for 100 grand less, but I'm going to let you know right now, you're not going to get it. Let me tell you why. Yep. Right? But here's the problem. Here, here's the real problem. It's the disc profile right? Nah. Because as a buyer agent, I'm probably a high eye and I want people to like me. Yep. But here's the thing. People will like you more when you get them what you, what they want. Right. Yes. And so just trying to get them to like you in that conversation is not going to get them what they want, which certainly will not be what you want. And it will certainly not lead them to really establishing deep rapport and wanting to refer to you. And so what you have to do is be willing to get in their face a little bit in an appropriate way. Mm. Right. And, and what does that mean? I always like to say, you got to knock people off their bike once in a while. And it's a lot easier for a listing agent to do this because they tend to be kind of high D personality Mm -hmm. types. Uh, Buyer agents tend to be high I. And so they have a harder time knocking people off their bike. But you've got to be clear with people because if you're not, then they're just going to get disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. You're going to be there saying, oh, but I love you, but it's okay. It's going to be all right. And and they're going to be losing and losing and losing. And eventually they're going to find somebody that's honest with them. Yeah. And so you've got to do, be that person from the beginning. Well, the honesty okay. up front creates a, a, that bond, like you said, and it's a, it's a professional trust level. Cause it, you mean, if you're going to look, look, Michael, the price point where you're looking you know, in these areas, it, it, it just right now, it's not going to financially work. So is there an alternative we can go to is something else? You can go to their rich uncle, get some cash, bring this thing up. I mean, we got to, if we're going to structure this thing and be a transaction engineer, then we got to work with all the cards on the table. And if I'm not being honest to you and you're not being honest to me, well, then we're just not going to get this done. Do you understand where I'm coming from? All the while, you've got to make sure they understand that you're on their side. Yes. Right? So you've got to do exactly what you just said. And they've got to know that, hey, look, I'm going to tell you how it really is. Understanding that I'm going to take care of you. I'm on your side and I will do whatever you want. But you got to understand what the landscape really is. And the prices that you're seeing in the multiple don't reflect the price it's going to sell for. Add 10%, add 20%, depending on what market you're in, whatever. Tell them that from the beginning. And oh, by the way, if it doesn't appraise, here's what's going to happen if it doesn't appraise. I'm going to tell you that now because the chances are it's not going to appraise. And this is how we're going to have to handle it when that comes up. Oh my God. Every time we talk, it's it's like literally we, we we were separated at birth and we still (laughs) share this. Because I mean, I I always tell people right up front, like you said, you have to make sure that that you're on their team. I always say, look, I'm on team Michael. I mean, team Michael all the way, you know, let's go. Um, So we're going to battle together. I'm going to go put my armor on. I'm going to get on my horse and I'm going to go out there and just, you know, be your defender. So this is how we set it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what, it's just, it, it builds people, they want to know that someone's there to be with them and protect them. They think the real estate agents are just there to use them to get a commission. But once you de- demonstrate to the fact that you actually are there to you know better their lifestyle in one way or the other, either they're dumping a property or picking a new one up, or maybe both, they're like, okay, well, Michael's on my team. Like this, mm-hmm. this dude's my ride or die homie. Like, let's, let's, let's get this thing rolling. <laughs> ride or die homie. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Makes us we, sound like Thelma and Louise, right? Something. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Minus the cliff, you know, at the yes, end. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I know our time is limited, so let's finish out with a round of how do people take the next step with us. Michael, let's start with you. Uh, I would suggest uh, join our Facebook group if you haven't already. That's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Club Wealth, or just search for the Club Wealth group on Facebook, or go to our website at clubwealth.com. Uh, I'd really get into the Facebook group, though. We got about 35,000 people in that group, uh, a lot of smart people. And on the blog, if you go to our website on the blog, you get tons of great free blogs on, you know, with a video on exactly how to do stuff. Uh, and it doesn't cost anything. So mm-hmm. that'd be yeah, the content there is insane. The number of like yeah. just the 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 level of the depth of the content, the checklist, the the you know all all the stuff the stuff that you guys do produce uh, is some of the best stuff I've seen in the industry. And it's yeah, it's it's amazing what you guys have got on the site. So definitely check that out. Uh, Greg, what about you? What's the best way to, to connect with you? 
Uh, reach out to me on Facebook, guys. It's probably my easiest place. Go look for this mug uh, with a microphone stuck in my face. And that, that will be me. Friend me a message or a friend request. You can go follow me on Instagram um, as well. Uh, it's Greg McDaniel, R-E-U for Real Estate Uncensored. Check out the podcast, Real Estate Uncensored, if you haven't. Also, definitely check out Michael's podcast, Legit Stuff. And I think that you guys are going to get a ton of content from both both organizations but mm -hmm. michael has a really cool checklist and we don't have cool checklists so go check out <laughs> we don't, checklist. that's right <laughs> <laughs> hey, but right, you got a really cool shirt i got to and before we wrap up i just have to compliment you again on the shirt man I, Thank you. I, I found Greg, that humorous. The Greg, for the time. listening audience, what does your shirt say? <laughs> it says, I found this humorous and then I have a, the, the humorous bone right below it. And so that's the funny part about it. People are like, wait, isn't it? Uh, oh, oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a really good intelligence test because if they don't get it, they're, they're not working with a lot. You just, you just, yeah. uh, like you can gauge the speed of how quickly they respond to your shirt. Some like, of them it takes till next week till they get it, but they yeah, get it eventually. Exactly. You really exactly. You'll get that on the drive home. <laughs> <laughs> If they're just like, why do you have a foot on your shirt? Well, <laughs> Rob on Central. Matt, where do people get a hold of you and get a copy of your book? Uh, getmicrofamous.com. And then make sure to check out the podcast. Make sure to leave a rating and a review if you're enjoying it. We thank you for every time you guys share the show, whether it's Club Wealth, whether it's Real Estate Uncensored, whatever it is. We appreciate you sharing it with other agents. It feeds the algorithm. It helps more people find the show. It helps more people. So we really appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks again, Greg, Michael. This is a blast. We appreciate coming together for the special second of a crossover episode. Love it. Hey, I gotta. Can I say one thing before we wrap this completely up? Sure, sure. I want to give you an unsolicited testimonial. You guys, you need to read Micro Famous. Uh, you need to understand that most people they want to be famous, but smart people want to be micro famous, and there's a reason why. And you need to find out what that is. You need to understand the difference. And Matt does a phenomenal job of explaining it. And so make sure you read the freaking book. It's oh. it's it's a powerful it's a powerful. Uh, under, you know, it's, it's, it's a powerful book that will help you understand a very powerful principle. Thank you, man. That's awesome. And that was totally unsolicited. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And thanks guys. We appreciate it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode.